The following program presents principles designed to promote good health. It should not take the place of personal professional care. Viewers should always consult their qualified health practitioner before considering alternative treatment. The next thing I want to look at is castor oil, and I've got some good news. I'm not going to advise you drink it. <laughs> but castor oil penetrates very deep, and it penetrates deeper than any other oil. So it can be used externally. And what it does, wherever castor oil penetrates, it breaks up lumps, bumps, congestions, adhesions, it can even break up a bone spur. It can break up tumours. I have known women have told me this, that's broken up lumps in the breast and those lumps may be cysts or even breast cancer. Now we had a doctor do our program and she'd rung me up and she said to me, Barbara, can you help me? I've got a lump in my breast, it's three centimetres. I said, it's important that you go on the hormone balancing cream buy some of those little panty liners, put castor oil on it and just slip it into your bra over the lump. A month later, she had the operation to take it out, then she came to our health retreat for a week to just detox. She said, an amazing thing happened, Barbara. That lump was three centimetres. I put the castor oil on for one month. I had the op and the doctor said, you know, this is really strange. That lump was three centimetres. Now it's only two. One of the guests said, well, why did you have the op? Why didn't you just do castor oil? She said, well, I didn't know till after the op. One lady told me that she totally conquered her breast cancer by just using the castor oil compressors. Remember, castor oil penetrates deeper than any other oil. <coughs> now, to use castor oil, you make a little pack. Now, this is not really a... a um, poultice, it's more a compress. So you'll notice I've got an old tea towel here. So you can use an old towel or something like that. And I'm going to put the castor oil on. Castor oil is very thick and it takes a little while to uh, soak in. So all I do is do about a middle third of the whole area. So I don't really want to hold it up because it's going to run. So can you see how much I've put on? But by the end of the meeting, that will have all soaked in. So I say to people, when you're using castor oil, pour it in and don't touch it for about half an hour and that will soak in. Now that's a really good area to put on the abdomen. Now, if castor oil is applied to the abdomen, it will heal any problems in the abdomen. So what have we got in abdomen? For a woman, um, there's the uterus. So that will penetrate and break up fibroids in the uterus. That will penetrate and break up cysts on the ovaries. That will penetrate and soften the colon if the person has constipation. That will penetrate into the colon and heal the colon if the, if the person has bad diarrhea. Remember Psalm 104 verse 14? God gave herbs for the service of man. So whether it's diarrhea, irritable bowel, or whether it's constipation, the castor oil will go in and it will penetrate very, very deep and it causes a cleansing and a healing in that area. It's a remarkable herb. So you can use it to break up um, gallstones. So you would put it, say, on the liver area under the right rib. You may put it at the back to break up kidney stones. I've known people that have had bone spurs, say, on the knee, and they'll apply the castor oil compressors. We had a lady do our program. She had bone spurs on both knees. <laughs> And she also had tumours in her abdomen. After doing our program, it's two years now, and both 
Two tumours have totally gone. Her oncologist can't believe it. So she had a total lifestyle change. And she was doing also the castor oil compresses on the knees for her, knee spur, her bone spurs on her knees. She said after, I think it was six weeks, they'd, cut, they'd gone down by half. She said she forgot to do it. And she noticed a, a month later, they were gone. <laughs> Now, last night we looked at the acid alkaline balance and it's a high acid diet which causes these um, deposits of calcium on the bones. So she also changed her diet so that she was not having a high acid diet anymore. So the castor oil, I've also seen it help people with brain tumours and what they do is they put it on the area. Remember, it'll penetrate very, very deep, break up lumps, bumps, congestions, adhesions. So if you've got a sore knee and you think, well, do I use the castor oil, do I use the ginger, or do I use the potato? We'll do one one night, one another night, one another night, and just see what the body says. And your body might like them all. <laughs> and that's perfectly fine because they're doing slightly different things. So it's very powerful. It'll break up a bone spur, but it will not break up your bone. Why won't it break up the bone? Because remember Psalm 104 verse 14? God gave herbs for the service of man. They work with the needs of your body. So the castor oil can be a very important part of a program on something like, well, anything that I have just suggested. Now that's already um, soaking in quite well. Can you see that? Now, because it's a compress, this can be reused again and again and again. So a person might use it a dozen times. Now, if someone's using it for, let's say, a fibroid on the uterus, in the uterus, they might wear it overnight. Or some people say, well, I don't like wearing it overnight. So I say, well, just wear it for at least five hours a day for at least five days a week. Little by little by little, it'll penetrate and start breaking up any unnatural growths in the area. One lady said that it felt so comfortable on her lump in her breast, she just wore it 24 seven. <laughs> and that's where you can devote a sports bra to this. Now, every time, let's say someone wears it overnight and they're gonna wear it the next night, they might put another little teaspoon in. You'll get to know when it starts to dry a bit. And one person said, well, can't I just rub the castor oil into the area? You'll just get a light layer then, and any clothes you put on it are gonna get castor oil on them, and that is no fun to get out of your clothes. But with this compress, it's a vehicle. It's a vehicle to hold the oil. And the thicker the compress, the more oil it can hold, and the more oil is available to go into you. Now, an old bush remedy in Australia is if you get something in your eye, put a drop of castor oil in your eye. And that'll roll around and even take it out. And another recipe, I have not used this, but I have had people testify for glaucoma and cataracts, put one drop in each eye before you go to bed at night. That's the only time you do it, because you'll go a bit blurry. But because you're going to sleep, it doesn't matter. One lady said, I'm about to have a op. what'll I do? I said, well, put the drop in each eye and see what happens. And if it's too advanced to basically have a turnaround, maybe you'll have a op. But personally, I think it's worth the try, because <laughs> you just might be able to prevent an op. Eye surgery's come a long way, and it's not a difficult operation, but it's, it's nice if it can be, be prevented. So the castor oil can be used in a variety of areas. What I'm going to look at now is charcoal. Now charcoal is also a drawer, and charcoal can penetrate very deep into the, into the area, drawing, but castor oil is unique. We talked about the drawing powers of potato. We talked about the drawing powers of the onion. But where charcoal is unique, it will absorb and neutralize poisons. Nothing else will do that. 
And in hospitals today, they use charcoal for poisoning cases. One girl said to me, I had an overdose and they gave me a choice to have my stomach pumped out or take charcoal. She said, I chose the charcoal. So charcoal absorbs and neutralizes poisons. So it can be used internally and it can be used externally. Now charcoal doesn't have a taste. And you can use it if any poison has been ingested. And it can also be used if a person has diarrhea or um, gastric or bloating. The charcoal, when it's taken, will absorb and neutralize the poisons and can bring a lot of relief. So if ever I had a baby that had a bit of diarrhea, I'd give them a bit of charcoal. And when I got the black nappy, because <laughs> I didn't use disposable nappy, I knew that my baby was well. Because once that charcoal goes through, it absorbs and neutralizes the poisons. So you can use it internally and you can use it externally. You use it externally, again, for cases of poisoning. So it can be used for a bee sting, a uh, ant bite, a snake bite. You don't have many snakes here. Hmm? <laughs> we have a few in Australia. Spider bites, do you have spiders? Oh, maybe we don't need to talk about the chakra. <laughs> Wasps, <laughs> bees, any sting, um, it, it's quite incredible. You almost have to experience it to believe it, that it takes the pain out straight away. And the reason it takes the pain out is because it absorbs and neutralizes the poisons. In fact, under a microscope, um, charcoal has lots of little facets, and it's all those little facet or surface areas that, that absorb the poison. Now, how do you take it? You can just mix it with water and drink it, like drinking black water. Again, it has no taste. Or to use as a poultice, you have to put it with something because mixing charcoal and water is like mixing dirt and water. So for a poultice, you could mix it with a bit of flour, you could mix it with a little polenta, but two that most natural therapists would use would be ground linseed. So ground linseed, when you pour boiling water on it, it goes like a jelly. Or what I have done is I've put linseed in a saucepan with water, I've cooked it for about five minutes and it goes like a jelly. And then you would add the charcoal to it. And that makes a very nice poultice, especially if someone's got a boil or a, uh, a wound. It's, it's very good on boils for uh, ingrown toenails, things like that. You could use potato or you could use this. Whenever there's pus in an area, I like to use charcoal because it'll absorb and neutralize the poison. So the other thing that I use is slippery elm. So let me take a moment to talk about slippery elm and then I will show you how to make the poultice. Slippery elm is the powdered bark of the slippery elm tree. And when you put water with slippery elm, it goes like a thick jelly. Now slippery elm has a growth stimulant in it. So it's excellent for healing the gastrointestinal tract. I talked about it earlier in the week. So when you put slippery elm with water, you would put about a teaspoon with about half a cup of warm water. You have to mix very well and drink it down or it'll go very thick. So if I have a guest who maybe has some diarrhea and um, sore gut, I'll say, are you ready? And when they nod, I mix it, mix it, say, drink, drink. <laughs> if you mix it and put it down, it'll go thick, and then you're eating it with a spoon. And one man said he doesn't mind eating it with a spoon. Well, he can eat it with a spoon if he wants. But most people would prefer to drink it down before it goes too thick. I'm gonna show you how to make a, a slippery elm and charcoal poultice. Maybe this is for a bee sting. So I use about a teaspoon of slippery elm, and see it's like a powder. And then I'm going to use a teaspoon of charcoal. You never want to drop this jar. So I use about the same amount. You always put the lid back on the jar very carefully. When I was in the rainforest, I just used to use the charcoal out of the fire, and I would blend it or I would, and if I did blend it, I couldn't open the blender for about 
half an hour, you have to wait for it settles down. Or sometimes I put it in a bag and get the rolling pin and crush it. But now that I'm civilised, I buy activated charcoal. And it's a, f a nice fine white powder, sorry, black powder. Fine powder is what I meant to say. And um, it's, it's a lot easier to drink or use because there's no lumps in it like my rainforest charcoal. But it does the same thing. Activated charcoal is a little bit more potent. They slowly, slowly combust it and put a fine moisture, a layer of moisture over it and it activates it so it's a bit more potent. But any charcoal will work. So I have got here, I think you can see it, don't want to tip it too much, is I've just mixed the charcoal and the, the slippery on and now I'm going to put a bit of water. I'm not sure how much put a little bit of water in it and if it's too thick add a bit more water if it's too runny then add a bit more slippery elm so you play with it and what I'm aiming is that this mixture here will be like, almost like a lump of jelly so I'm mixing mixing and I shall put it in a poultice in a minute and you will see it and this is quite quick to, to mix up. I was gardening one day and a jumping ant bit me. Jumping ants are very, very painful. Jumping ants, it feels like there's a knife gone in. And I was so busy gardening, I, I didn't, um, didn't want to stop and make a poultice, so I just grabbed a bit of ice and put it on it. And of course, that'll stop all inflammation. And as soon as the ice had melted, the pain came back with a vengeance. And I did this three times and then I realised it was going to be much easier to just go in, make a poultice, put it on my finger and go back to gardening, which I did. And when I put the charcoal poultice on, all the pain went. It just, just goes like that. It's incredible. And I just kept that on my finger all afternoon. It's almost you wonder if you really did get bitten because it just takes it away. Now. Can you see the, the, the uh, consistency I've got? And that's basically the slippery elm that's giving it that, that consistency. And so now I'm going to make it into a poultice. So I'll put the plastic down and I'll get the chucks. And you might see this going into the poultice. So can you see like it's like a lump of jelly? And one of the beauties of that is that the slippery elm is also a drawer. And it's the same with the linseed. It is also a drawer too. So you've got a double whammy effect. And you spread it out. I'll hold it up and show it to you. In fact, it's almost like you're spreading it like peanut butter. Can you see that? And the beauty of the slippery elm is it really is just holding it in place. And then you fold over like you did the other poultices. And you can see that that's one of the beauties of the, of the chucks. It's starting to come through the holes already. Now where would I use this? Again, I would use it on a snake bite, an ant bite, a bee sting a uh, wasp bite, any poisoning cases, but you can also use that on a sore eye. That will bring a lot of relief to a sore eye. And you can also use it on, um, on a boil. And again, as I mentioned before, any case where you've got swollen and you've got pus, and you might say, well, wouldn't you use the grated potato? You certainly could. You might do grated potato one time, and you might do the uh, the charcoal another time. But wherever you've got any poisoning or pus, that's where you would use the charcoal because of its ability to absorb and neutralise the poisons. So that's the charcoal poultice. So you're starting to see that it's a good idea to have a little jar of charcoal in your first aid kit. We'll just have another look at the... Can you see the syrup forming now? It's still a little bit thick in the bottom because it can take 24 hours before it's fully syruped. 
But if you had a, someone that had a bad cough, you could have, use a little bit of that straight away. Now we're going to have a look at cane pepper. This is my travelling pack. I take cane pepper everywhere with me. Cane pepper is a remarkable herb. Cane pepper is not chilli. Chilli comes from the chilli family and cane pepper comes from the capsicum family. Chilli is an irritant to the lining of the gastrointestinal tract. Black pepper is an irritant to the lining of the gastrointestinal tract. But cane pepper will heal a stomach ulcer. Cane pepper moves blood. It's one of the best circulatory stimulants there is. It's not a nervous system stimulant like your caffeines or your tobacco. It's a blood stimulant. And when you consider that the life of the flesh is in the blood, cayenne pepper is a wonderful healer. And you can put cayenne pepper with any other herb and it'll intensify its action. So let's begin by looking at how you can use cayenne pepper internally. By the way, how would you take it? Well, a medicinal dose may be a quarter of a teaspoon in a little bit of water and throw it down. Won't it burn? Well, I prefer to call it tingle. <laughs> it might feel like it's burning, but it will never burn. I have a book at home by Jethro Kloss called Back to Eden. He devotes half a page to every herb except for cane pepper. 10 pages he devotes to cane pepper. It's a remarkable herb, and I think I mentioned this the other night. You can get an e-book. It's called Curing with Cayenne by Sam Beiser, and you can download that book. The whole book is on cayenne pepper. It's a remarkable herb. So let's have a look at internally. Internally, it'll heal a stomach ulcer because what the cayenne does, it causes a constriction of any open blood vessels. So just for a moment, let's look at externally. If you have a cut, cut, you pour cane pepper into it and it'll stop the bleeding. Now we had a Fijian doctor come over and work with me for a couple of weeks. She wanted to look at what we did. Do you know she works in Suva now and her name is the a nutritional doctor. She, she works all with natural medicines. But let's back to, to uh, Misty Mountain. I'm giving a lecture, and I heard a crash in the kitchen, but I just kept lecturing, as I always do. Like when the little girl does ballerinas there, I just keep lecturing. I just keep lecturing. Yes, the building might fall down, and I just might keep lecturing. That's my job, <laughs> just keep lecturing. I was in the Bronx, New York, lecturing one day, and behind everyone, a policeman came in with his gun drawn. I just kept lecturing. <laughs> <laughs> he went out again. <laughs> so the good news, we're going to keep going. Anyway, um, where was I? Where was I? Misty Mountain, and we've got the doctor. Crash in the kitchen. Found out later the blender had dropped and she had bare foot, feet as Fijians do. And you know how thick blenders are? Three bits of glass had gone on the top of her foot and she had three one centimetre long cuts on the top of her feet. And the staff were saying, Barbara, Barbara, quick. So I went outside and just like most Fijians, she's laughing. <laughs> And I looked at her foot and I could see little globules of fat. How deep is that? That's very deep. I said, don't worry about it, we'll fix it. So I went and got the cayenne pepper and I sprinkled cayenne pepper in it. Anyway, she laughed the louder, as Fijians do. Most others would have screamed. <laughs> Doesn't it hurt? Well, it's already hurting. So it just hurts a little bit more. <laughs> And only hurts momentarily. It's like when you put cayenne pepper in your mouth, it, it, the tingle dies down. And then we bound it up. Well, I saw her the next day and she said, I can't believe this. She said, I would have stitched that. She said, if I'd been near a hospital, he, she said, I would have stitched that. But she said, this has drawn it together. She said, all the swelling's gone down. She said, it's unbelievable. So you see, her experiences with, at Misty, maybe that one, <laughs> was very helpful on her knowing how to treat. And that's what cane will do. 
My son William, when he was about 10, he was clearing away the banana, the, the cut banana. You know how bananas, you'll get the old ones? And the elder son was cutting them with a machete. And William thought Peter had finished that area and he came in just as the knife came down and cut across the fingers. In fact, the other son was looking through the grass for the fingers, but it was all right, they were still there. <laughs> anyway, I was in the meeting at a time. I looked up and saw Peter saying, Mom, and I said to my daughter, go, go and see what's wrong with Pete. And then they were all gone. Well, I finished the meeting and went up to the house half an hour later, and there's William with cane pepper all over. The kids had put the cane pepper on it. <laughs> And he was sitting there with a frozen juice ice block. That had made him happy. <laughs> Do you know that it should have been stitched probably? Well, I wouldn't have stitched it, but I'd say most people would have thought it, it should have been stitched, but it healed very nicely. Now, this little finger was bent for a while, so what did he cut through? A tendon. Now, when my brother-in-law saw that, he was not very happy because he felt I should have had it stitched. But I thought, well, it's his left hand and it's the third finger, so what does it matter if it's a bit bent? Do you know how you sort of got a... And what would happen if he went to hospital? They would have insisted on tetanus. They would have insisted on, you know, the, uh, how are they going to find that time? I thought, no, it'll be right. So what I did was every time we were sitting in church or sitting in a car, I'd just rub it. I'd just rub it. And I found within a few weeks it was working again. See, hey, you've, you've, got to, you've got to weigh up. What, what's, what, is this really important? <laughs> and as I said, if I broke my arm and my bones were sticking out, I'd be very thankful for a doctor to <laughs> perform an operation to get my arm working again. But there are lots of little tiny bits and pieces that the natural remedies will fix. So any cut, put the cane pepper on it. Yes, it will hurt, but it's already hurting, and remember, it'll settle down and then bind it up, because it'll constrict the blood vessels and cause them to shut. Now, internally, if there's a bleeding ulcer and you take cane pepper, won't it hurt? It'll give a little bit of a tingle, but it will never hurt, meaning it will never cause an ulcer. In the book Jethro Kloss, there's a doctor that says, it's impossible to cause a lesion with cayenne pepper. Another doctor said, you cannot abuse cayenne pepper. It's impossible to abuse it. It's actually a very safe herb. It will never harm. It might feel like it sometimes, <laughs> but it will never harm. You can also use it internally if someone has a heart attack. Now, I had read about this, but I experienced it once, and it was when we had our health retreat in Melbourne. I got a call from one of the staff. A lady's had a heart attack in the middle of a cooking class. So I ran down. I was there in three minutes. The lady's lying on the ground. Her face is white. There's a guy holding a pulse. He said, the pulse is gone? Almost. I said, quick, cane pepper. I got a half a teaspoon on a of cane pepper, quickly put it in her mouth. She was half conscious, we were able to give her a little bit of water to, to drink. Within two minutes, the guy holding the pulse said, the pulse is strong. All the color came back into her cheeks and she sat up and said, what happened? <laughs> Just amazing, we sold out of cane pepper that program. <laughs> Everyone, what happened to that lady? What happened to that lady is, that that cane pepper, when it got into the blood vessels, it thinned the blood. This is the best blood thinner. No need to woofrin, for woofrin, I mean rat poison. Hmm? No need for aspirin. And by the way, it has been shown today that aspirin causes brain bleeds. This is very, very safe with no side effects. Now, if someone is on warfarin or aspirin and they're a little concerned, I would suggest start taking a quarter of a teaspoon three times a day. And most people, if they're on warfarin, they have to be tested, yeah, every few weeks or every month. And the doctor will say, your blood's getting so thin, we can reduce your medication. Mm -hmm. because he will see it if you're taking cayenne pepper. It's very safe. There are, I was going to say many doctors, probably 1% of doctors. There are a few 
that, that are using natural medicines with amazing results. See, there's no side effect with this. You could take a bucket of that a day and you would still not bleed to death. Mm -hmm. Because, remember herbs, Psalm 104 verse 14, God made herbs for the service of man. They work with the body. Now what that did when this lady took it, it thinned the blood, it immediately opened, dilated all her blood vessels and she got a dramatic delivery of blood all through her body and that's what pulled her around. Isn't that amazing? If you've got a stomach ulcer, it'll constrict the bleeding vessels. If you need to open the arteries, it'll just open that. That's how the herbs work with the body. You can also use cayenne pepper to wake up areas of the body that may be sleeping. Now we have had a few people come to our program who've got peripheral neuropathy. That means they've lost the feeling in their feet. And this is one of the side effects of chemotherapy. So we've had a few people come who have lost the feeling in their feet. And it can also be used when people get commonly uh, cold feet. You must never allow your feet to get cold because perfect health requires perfect circulation and perfect circulation means that your feet are the same as the rest of your body, the same temperature. I used to get cold feet a lot until I, until I started exercising. You see, exercise is the best cure for poor circulation, especially that interval training. But we have had many people come with cold feet, and we've had a few people come with peripheral neuropathy. They've lost the feelings in their extremities. Now, if someone's lost the feelings in their extremities, you can never do hot and cold foot treatments on them. You put cold feet into really hot water, you can damage the tissues. So you have to be very cautious with that. But you can put a cane pepper compress on the bottom of the feet. Now what I usually do, now you see what I've done here, I've got a piece of glad wrap and I've got kitchen paper that's been folded over. I'm going to put a light sprinkle of oil on that and then I'm going to sprinkle about half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper on that. And what the person does, they put their foot straight on the cayenne pepper, wrap the glad wrap round, put it in a sock and keep it on all night. And by morning, their feet are warm and their feet stay warm. <coughs> I had one man who'd lost all feeling in his feet and on the second night he got pins and needles in his feet. What's pins and needles? That's the first sign that life's coming back in the feet. You see it's very, very gentle. So usually I put olive oil and I haven't got olive oil so I'm just going to do a little bit of castor oil here. So just a little, a little smear of olive oil oil or castor oil, just enough to, uh, so that the uh, cane pepper will stick. And now I just spread that over so it's spread out. And I have put a little bit too much on there, but that will be just enough for the other foot. So I'm just going to put another one on so that, to mop it up because it's, oh yes. So I've easily got enough for two feet here. And most of us have got two feet, yes. And now I'm going to sprinkle the cayenne pepper on. So the oil is just so that the cayenne pepper sticks to it. Because if you didn't put the oil on, of course the cayenne pepper would just all fall off. Now this is about how much I put on. So you see that? and then the foot goes on that. It will not burn the foot. If I put that on my foot, and we're not going to do it in this weather, because we're warm enough anyway, but if I put that on my foot, by about four in the morning, I'm waking up wanting to take them off. My feet are getting so hot. But if someone has cold feet, by morning their feet are just getting warm. If someone has no feeling in their feet, sometimes it will take two nights before it will come. Now, if you put it on your feet every night, you're going to want to sit with your feet in ice water all day long because your feet will get too hot. So what I usually suggest, if someone has cold feet, do it about every three nights until their feet stay warm. And if someone has no feeling in their feet, 
Even then, I would probably only do it every two nights. And of course, you wait for your result. You would stop if the person has full feeling in their feet and their feet feel like they're on fire the whole time, then you would stop. So you watch, you watch the body's response, but it's very, very safe. <laughs> That's very, very safe compress. And it can bring feeling into feet that nothing else will do. Remember what cayenne pepper does? What I like to do is I like to understand what the actives are in the herb and then you know to apply it. And it's number one most important active is it moves blood. So it's going to pull blood to the area when you've got that on the bottom of the feet. So when you take it off in the morning you just wipe it with a, a wet washer, dry it and um, put your shoes and socks on. Now, very important to keep your feet warm. We're coming into winter, don't let your feet get cold because cold feet drives cool blood back to the extremities which can be, can be very bad for the health of your internal organs. You can also wake up a thyroid gland. So underactive thyroid gland, you see, underactive thyroid gland, you can put a cane pepper poultice on that or compress. And what you would do is you would just do one about this size because your thyroid gland is about there. And then you would put it on for a few hours. Now we had a lady who was so excited about this because she had an underactive thyroid. She was on medication. Today she is on no medication. It took a bit of work but eventually she got off her medication and that's quite a surprise to most people because most people think if they're on the thyroid medication they're on it for the rest of their life. Her doctor took her off because all her levels became normal because of everything else she was doing. So she put it on and went to bed and she didn't sleep all night because that woke her thyroid gland up so much she became <laughs> active all night. So message from this is don't put it on before you go to bed. So after that we started putting it on just in the morning while I was doing the lecture while she was with us. And she said that after about half an hour it got really, really hot and then it would settle down a little bit. So can you see what's happening? Is blood is being drawing into that thyroid gland to wake it up. Remember what blood is? It's the life of the flesh. If someone's got an overactive thyroid gland, students, what would you put on the thyroid gland to slow it down? Ice. <laughs> That's so simple, isn't it? It's so simple. But one thing that really can help the thyroid gland to control or balance out is high intensity exercise. High intensity exercise wakes up that thyroid gland. Often thyroid glands, whether it be under or overactive, are iodine deficient. And you can do a very simple iodine test. You can get iodine from the chemist and you paint it, say, on the inside of your arm and you'll get a brown smudge. And then you just observe how long it's there for. If that iodine disappears within an hour, you've got low iodine. Well, how do you get your iodine up? You just put it on every day until it stays there. It should be there for about five hours. That's a very simple one, isn't it? And your thyroid's main food is iodine. And earlier in the week, actually it was yesterday, last night, I said that mercury gobbles up your selenium and your thyroid gland needs selenium to convert iodine into thyroxine. And so getting the mercury fillings out is also important. You only need five Brazil nuts a day to supply all the iodine that you need in a day. Now we're just about wrapping up now and um, there's one more thing I'd like to talk about and that's Epsom salts. And Epsom salts is magnesium sulphate. And magnesium is a, um, a muscle relaxant. So if someone's stressed out, sore muscles, can't sleep, they can have a, a Epsom salts bath before they go to bed. Even put a couple of cups of Epsom salts in a hot bath. And remember it does three things. It re relaxes the muscles and you might do it for aching muscles, you might do it for um, 
if you're stressed and you might do it if you can't sleep because magnesium and moist heat relax the muscles. But what a lot of people don't know is you can use uh, Epsom salts for a burn. It's one of the best things to use for a burn. You can use grated potato for a burn. You can use aloe vera for a burn. They're both excellent, but you can also use a saturated solution of Epsom salts. Now, how you get a saturated solution of Epsom salts? Let's say you've got this glass of half a glass of water, put a teaspoon of Epsom salts in and stir it. It'll dissolve because magnesium is a water-hungry molecule, remember? So you put that magnesium in and it'll dissolve into the water. Put another teaspoon in, mix it. Put another teaspoon in, mix it. And you keep doing that till it won't dissolve anymore. You now have a saturated solution of Epsom salts. One lady said she always has a jar in her fridge. Now, my husband was whippersnippering one morning. This is just as the program's starting. And he came running in, and I could see by the look of his face, he's done something really bad. Because he's always scratching or hurting himself, but you know, he doesn't do anything about it. For him to come to me, it's really bad. What he'd done is he touched the red, almost red hot exhort on the, um, or part on the whippersnipper, and he'd burnt these three fingers. Now, how sensitive are our fingers? And his face was white, and he was just holding his finger. Now, we were busy making beds. I think one lot of guests had gone out, the other lot had come, were about to come in, so we were busy. So I got a bowl of water, and I put his hand in it, and then I put a few teaspoons of Epsom salts. I just said, just keep it in there, and I went and made another bed, came back, dissolved, put a few more teaspoons in and told him to mix it. He said, it'll be right now, and he went to go, and then he came running back and put it in. <laughs> And as I saw later, he, he had burnt several layers of skin. It was a very bad burn. Anyway, he said, I've got to get back to whippersnippering. <laughs> so what I did, because I now had a saturated solution, I got some cloths, say, just like this. So don't throw out your old tea towels and your old towels and your old sheets. Save them for your poultice box. And I soaked it in the Epsom salt solution. I didn't squeeze it right out. I kept it quite moist, not quite dripping. And I put it over every finger. And then I put Glad Wrap and taped it. And I put that on every finger. And the pain came back, but only about 10% of the pain. It had, by doing, you know, in the bowl of water, no pain at all. But only about 10% of the pain came back, so he could endure that. And then he went back to work. Now at lunchtime, when he came and sat with me and we ate with the guests, he was just saying, miracle, this is a miracle. He couldn't believe it, how it had stopped the pain. It's quite incredible. He had very bad burns and they were lightly blistered, but often it won't even blister, but he had gone through just about every layer. So what I had to do after that, I just taped, um, because it's very hard to wrap Michael up because he just wants to get going. But I just put aloe vera. I just cut a leaf and I spliced it down the middle and just taped a hunk of aloe vera to each finger because he now had raw flesh. And of course, your skin is a protection. So if you ever break that skin or open it, you've got to put something on to protect it. Aloe vera has a growth stimulant in it. And you know if you cut an aloe vera leaf in half off the plant, you come back a few hours later, it's grown a skin. Have you seen that? That's because it has a growth stimulant. So you can use it internally like slippery elm with, for irritable bowel, and you can also use it externally for any wounds for burns, it's excellent for that. And it, it helped to grow that skin very, very quickly. And I wouldn't be surprised if a doctor had seen those raw flesh, they would have suggested a skin graft. But the aloe vera grew that skin beautifully and there's not even a sign of it now. Could I, put have, could I have put aloe vera straight on it? Well, I could have, but he was in such pain, we just immediately put it in water and the Epsom salts and it was just there, so that was handy. So sometimes you won't have aloe vera, but you've got the Epsom salts. And sometimes you won't have Epsom salts, but you'll have aloe vera. So it's, as you can see by what I've shown you tonight, there's a whole lot of bits and pieces you can do. And so sometimes it depends on just what you've got available. And that's why in a crisis, students, you need that poultice box. <laughs> 
And I hope every home has got an aloe vera plant. It's good to have these bits and pieces there. Are there any questions before we close? Yes. Sorry. Sorry? Pardon? Yeah, we do have a video. It's a poultice, a poultice DVD. Um, I've probably gone a lot further than on the DVD, but the DVD has everything that you need. There's a question back there. What is slippery elm? No, it grows in America. It's the powdered bark of the slippery elm tree, but, but you will find most health food shops have it because it's such a well-known herb. And I think every home should have the slippery elm. It's an excellent herb. Yes? Yes, you can use it for Raynard's disease. Remember, it's very, very safe. It's very safe. Might not feel like it when you have your quarter of a teaspoon down the hatch, but it settles down very quickly. Yes? Have you heard of urinating on a burn or peeing on a burn? Have I heard of urinating on a burn? Well, it wouldn't surprise me because of the minerals in urine. Yep, so that is something you can do if, you, if there's nothing else. <laughs> But your children probably won't let you do it. <laughs> but if they're in pain, they'll probably let you do anything. There's a hand up the back. How much cayenne pepper in the flu bomb? Well, some people are brave enough to have half a teaspoon. If I was making it for a child, I'd put a light sprinkle. So I didn't put it there because it's whatever you can handle. There was another question, yeah? It's just when we're using the castor oil, we don't actually, you just use it straight, you don't put something else on it. No, no, uh, when, like when you're using castor oil, you just use it straight. You see that's really soaked in now. So can you see how it just takes a little while? And when you've finished using it, you just fold it over on itself. And then the next night you open it up and use it again. In fact, I, I would put a bit more plastic on this. You want it well covered. Yes? Iodized salt. Let me tell you something about iodized salt. As soon as you open your iodized salt packet, you've actually lost 50% of the iodine within about half an hour. So iodized salt is just three minerals now, sodium chloride, iodine, but again, the iodine is lost very quickly. But Lugal's solution, you can buy from the chemist, and if he doesn't have it, he'll order it for you, because 50 years ago, every chemist used lots of Lugal's solution. Are you familiar with betadine? Betadine is something you can buy in the chemist to put on scrapes and sores. It's just iodine. I don't, I'm not sure with Fry's balsam, but it's, um, but something that's very common in Australia is betadine, which you can put on sores, which is just iodine. Any questions? Yep. A headache of excellent hydrotherapy treatment for a headache is putting the feet in hot water. The only time you wouldn't put feet in hot water if the person had no feeling in their feet. You see, the blood tends to um, sit in the head or get congested with a headache. And if you put your feet in a bucket of hot water, it can pull the congestion down. If we get, because we get a lot of guests on day one of Misty Mountain Health Retreat with headache from caffeine withdrawals, so we give them hot foot baths, and it certainly takes the edge off. And you keep the feet in hot water for about 20 minutes. So you have a kettle nearby and you keep it hot for 20 minutes. Yes? What about insomnia? Sorry, I didn't get that next bit. 
post-brain surgery with insomnia. Yeah, very difficult because the insomnia is usually caused by the brain surgery, but it, it should heal. But you can put, if someone has, brain, has had brain surgery, you could put that on the wound, the castor oil compress, and it will bring relief. And Epsom salts bath can, can relax the whole body. So there will be a bit of time. Um, I guess how long since the brain surgery? So you, you look at a few things there. Yes? What about... What about bunions on the feet? Uh, castor oil can help to break those down. Also walking barefoot on the grass <laughs> and walking on the sand, getting all those muscles working. And um, also you, it's very important to get good quality shoes. Probably uh, I spend a lot of money on good quality shoes. You've got to look after your feet because they're holding you up. <laughs> Yes? For moles, uh, you can try the castor oil. I've known people to get rid of skin cancers by putting a dab of castor oil on, on every day. So you can try it. Um, there is a, a weed called milkweed, uh, radium, and when you break it open, it has a white sap. That, that can also burn out a skin cancer or a, or a mole. Uh, what causes mole? Difficult to say. It can be multiple things and no one really has, uh, has said. I think probably because it can be a multiple of things. There can be a bit of inheritance there. There can be other things. So thank you for your attention tonight, ladies and gentlemen. You've done well sitting in this hot, hot night. So I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to have a meeting from 2 till 4. 2 till 4. And tomorrow, we, um, if you're interested in buying DVDs or books, come early. We'll be here a little bit earlier. Unfortunately, at 4 o'clock, we have to jump in the car and go because we have to be at the airport at 4.30. But Two to four, we'll be doing question and answer, but I will be having a break in the middle where you can look at DVDs and, uh, and the books. And um, probably in this session, we'll be looking at any questions that you feel have arisen in your mind that we may not quite have covered. So um, we have a few questions in the question box, and um, it'll give you the opportunity to ask questions. So. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow between four and six. Did you have something to say? I'd just like to, we had no break today, but just to invite you that there's still refreshments out the back, like, like you've been having the last few nights. So there's still refreshments out the back. There's, there's, um, there's water and if bits. Have questions that you want to write down, you can write them. So if you have any question, there's the, we'll get the question box out the back. Four o'clock to s no. <laughs> Delete, I'll start again. From two o'clock to four o'clock. Sorry. Yeah, it must be time to go to bed. <laughs> yep, we have a few of those books. Now before we go, let us close with prayer. Father in heaven, we we thank you very much for these simple treatments. We thank you for the herbs of the, of the earth, how simple they are and yet how powerful they are. So I pray, Father, that you'll give everyone the courage to uh, try these natural treatments and also to, to ask for your help and guidance because there are many methods of healing, but there's one that God approves of and it is the natural ways that work with the healing powers of the body. Thank you for this information, Father, and we pray it all in the name of Jesus. Amen.